<laughs> and I'm very interested to know what is happening with your elephants. Well, you, you've just got hold of me at the right time. Uh, the, uh, the authorities have capitulated and got an out-of-court settlement with me and I'm now building the elephants. Yeah, but what, what's happening with this specific uh, situation, if you could tell the story about it? Well, you know, there's a hell of a story, eh? But the long and the short of it is, uh, I was commissioned by the city. The city? Who saw, Durban? Who saw this the city where I live. Yeah, Durban. Uh, in Durban, yes. I was commissioned by the city to do uh, initially three elephants and then probably the addition of three or four more life-size in the city of Durban because they had seen a project of mine uh, in Belgium on the beaches of Belgium and they got excited about that because my proposal was the bridging of an artwork that also began to address in the public space other additional issues are like environmental issues like co issues of coexistence and tolerance uh, you know, I, I started a, a foundation. Let me just see if I can get you. You've, you've obviously seen this photograph. Yeah. Slowly, slowly. Yeah. If you could move, move it a bit slower. Yes? Uh, yeah, it's just these elephants on the beach. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, this one. Okay, yes. Okay. Now, when I made them and I put them walking into the sea, hundreds of thousands of people responded to these elephants. Uh, children, uh, adults, uh, intellectuals, working class people. It is as if the elephants had the capacity to cross multiple boundaries of discussion that was quite sophisticated from the pure celebration to joy to the role of the artwork within the public space, uh, to the conservation metaphor, to issues of migration and, and, and overpopulation, to issues of recycling, to issues of coexistence and tolerance. All of these issues were kind of embraced and self-consciously and unbeknownst to me uh, by, by these elephant metaphors. And so, I thought, given the urgency of the debate around the environment, wouldn't it be interesting to place these elephants in the world as metaphors for this discussion? Not just without being ponderous, methodological, or didactic, just by invoking people's joy and one's aesthetics at whatever entry point, you could set up discussions that began to ponder the presence of things that were now absent and also the fact that these massive animals actually are alive and happen to coexist with us as part of a technological meltdown and are increasingly threatened. And so my postulate was that if we were able to generate the future of these animals, it meant our intellectual systems were capable of modicons of tolerance which is currently absent and I mean tolerance not only of of all living things I mean the environment but also mostly people because of the migration of elephants like the migrations of people there's a compacting around borders and boundaries that are now leading to a closing in of vision nationally and internationally so this is the subtext but what I really wanted to do was to kind of enter this debate through people's joy and sense of wonderment to be in the presence of a life-size elephant, which happened to also be a work of art. And in a way, break the boundary of the artist as well, migrating outside of the boundaries of the studio or the museum, but also able to, with a certain combustibility, enter the public space. So this is what they wanted to commission from me, 
And given the combustibility of the political space in South Africa, it wasn't long before multiple ownerships, unregulated, unconstitutional cavalier behavior resulted in the termination of the contract in a, an unlawful manner. And it then led me to challenge the, the defense of the elephant and the artwork within the constitutional framework of South Africa, embracing issues of the moral authority of the artwork, and secondly, freedom of speech, and of course, intellectual property and all that. I don't understand why this all happened, really. There was, there is an opposition black political party okay. that has elephants as its, as its logo. And it was on the basis of this objection that the elephant, despite the fact that it's the most powerful ancestral symbol in Africa, it is the most powerful and redolent symbol in Africa of conservation. And I put the city and the government on notice that I will personally in my individual capacity defend this, even if it meant going to the highest court in the land. This, of course, resulted in its own uh, uh, combustibility, as you can imagine. Uh, the authority of government was seriously challenged. It was also challenged within the framework of race and identity, black against white, when in fact the real issue was quite simple. It was about power and lawlessness and the rights for us to live within a constitutional democracy rather than a banana republic. And they feel that depending on your access to power or your lack of access to power, you will either yield or prevail. And I'm saying no, that the law must prevail. And even if it's a small entity and a small person, that the rule of law has to prevail, especially the law which protects the vulnerability of creativity. Creativity is an integral part of the language of a fundamental democracy. So if we let that go, as if that's not important, we, we negotiate the foundation principles. So it was that principled a fight in addition to the fight around the protection of the elephants, the work of art, but also the principle, the democratic principle. And, and it went on for three years. And it, 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 it was stressful, and as a, but we won the case.